Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, October the 10th, race number nine at Belmont Park. Let's throw up the field for the grade one $250,000 Jockey Club Gold Cup. We're going a mile and a quarter over Big Sandy. You can download free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page, drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. The Mercurial number four Tacitus is the even money favorite. Just when it seems Tacitus, Mike, is ready to reach that brass ring when he won the Suburban he kind of came back to earth a little bit, getting beat at odds on in the Woodward, although by a good horse that had the run of the race. Yeah, true enough. I mean, um, I guess, you know, the horse that beat him last time, Global Campaign, um, has a right to be pretty good, and he was on the lead the entire way. But it was just, you know, in the same vein, it was a little bit more of the same for Tacitus, who just um, tends to come up short more often than not. Todd Pletcher will send out the one happy saver, an undefeated three-year-old tackling his elders. We look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector, and Timeform U.S. believes that Arad Ortiz is going to have happy saver out there on the early lead, and I think that would be a pretty good idea. There doesn't seem to be a lot of gas in this race at all, and Tacitus likely will be on chase mode again. True enough. I mean, we'll see how it all plays out. I don't know um, if they necessarily want Happy Saver on the lead, but he could certainly get there um, against this field. And you know what? Source is pretty good. Um, he's three for three. Um, his connection certainly could have, and they did think of running him in the Preakness, and they, you know, elected to wait for this race. Um, based on what he's done on the track, is he going to have to improve? Yeah, he's going to have to improve, Dan, but he probably has it in him. He's looked really good winning all three starts so far. And I think he doesn't know what he's doing just yet. It's just pure talent and not professionalism. And that's why I like the way Todd's managed him. When he won that allowance race in his second start, stretching out to a mile and an eighth, he kind of was drifty a little bit that day. They ran him in the Tessio where, listen, he was one to five for a reason. We watched this race. He got a very nice trip under Trevor McCarthy. The horse that he runs down Monday morning QB wants no part of a mile and an eighth. Everything went to his favor, but I like the way he did this. He's slowly figuring it out yeah he is and i just particularly like um in all three of his races dad he just he finishes his races off which i like about him um so it sort of makes me feel like the mile and a quarter um will be within his scope prioritize ever since they've switched him to the dirt who knew who knew he'd be just as good, if not better, on the dirt than he was on the turf. Third in the grade one Woodward last time up behind Tacitus. He wasn't well beaten by that horse. Um, he's probably going to need to stay close to the pace. And the good news is he's got Louis Sires aboard. Yeah, he has. And listen, he's he's run well in his recent dirt starts, and he's paired up 99 buyers for his last two. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you something else about his Woodward too, Dan. Um, he didn't run that much worse than Tacitus did in there. I I couldn't tell you what Eric Cancel was thinking um, early on in that race. Um, he went forward with this horse all the way through the stretch the first time and all the way around the first turn into the back stretch. He just kept this horse a good four or five wide for no apparent reason before he finally dropped him back off the pace. And this horse did not stop trying through the stretch. He actually, I thought that was an underrated performance last time. Name changer, the number three, is a hard hitter. He's slowly racing himself back into shape. He hasn't had much opportunity here in 2020. Um, his last race was a slight step forward in the Salvatore Mile, a race that was controlled by Pirate's Punch, a horse that's in very, very good form right now. He's stepping up in class. He's stepping up in distance. Maybe he could get close to the pace. Yeah, I think he probably can. It'll be interesting to see what he does, too, because he has back races that would give him a chance in here. Um, he's run four times since they brought him back from the long layoff. Um, and he's run into, you know, some pretty um, hot horses in all four of those races. I realized that Monongahela and and Senior Investment, the horses that beat him um, and, his, and his starts three and four back, they're, they're frauds, both of them. But at that time, they were in really good form. And he's bumped into two good horses since then as well. Tacitus is seeking his first grade one victory. Let's watch his performance in the Woodward. He sat just off of global campaign from the start. He takes a good run at him. I think it's a bit uncharitable to say he hung. I just think global campaign was better than he was on this day. You're going to see prioritize the number six in the maroon silks gaining ground gradually on Tacitus in the stretch. It was a disappointing loss because he's odds on. He probably should win with the trip he has. But I have a feeling a global campaign finally lived up to the billing in this race. 
this is Tacitus's race to lose, even with some nice, lightly raced three-year-olds in the field. Yeah, that's how I looked at it, too. I mean, it's kind of amazing um, to look at Tacitus on paper, though. I mean, this horse almost has $3 million in the bank, Dan. And his big career win, I guess you would say it's the Wood Memorial um, way back in April of last year. Um, I think he's like one for nine since then with a win in that, you know, very weak suburban two starts back. I know he just made a lot of money. He tends to show up every time. Um, he's more disappointing than not. Um, boy, I don't know what excuse you're going to be making for him after this race, though. He's certainly found the right spot here. Mystic Guide's starting to live up to that beautiful pedigree. I like the way Michael Stidham has handled him. They ran him in the Peter Pan against Country Grammar. I thought he had to alter course sharply four wide on the turn. He came real wide into the stretch. He was running at the end. And in the Jim Dandy, Stidham put the blinkers on, and Mystic Guide responded. Maybe it wasn't the strongest Jim Dandy in the world, but Jesus' team came back to run just fine in the Preakness. Let's watch the Jim Dandy for Mystic Guide and Mr. Guide is the number seven in here. Godolphin Blue going to grind down Jesus's team who might have moved a little bit early. I think this pace scenario worked out nicely for Mr. Guide. It, it did, but he also ran, um, he actually improved in this race. Um, and he's, you know, he was still off the pace, but I think the blinkers had him closer as well. And it made a difference because in the, in the Peter Pan two back, he just got lost early in that race. He was way too far out of it. Um, I think the blinkers helped the source last time. I still think he has a lot of upside, Dan. There, there's something there with this horse. I don't know if, if this Jockey Club Gold Cup is going to be the race for him, um, but there's something there with him. I think he's going to turn out to be pretty good. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I just think the mile and a quarter might be the great equalizer for Tacitus. He doesn't need a lot of help, but we know he likes a mile and a quarter. We saw that in his quote-unquote breakthrough victory in the Suburban. I'm going 4-5. You're going 4-1. Yeah, I mean, of the three-year-olds, I slightly preferred Happy Saver. Um, we'll see what happens, though. I, I don't know, Dan. I, you know, I, I'm not going to be surprised when Tacitus loses again. But boy, he's really supposed to win the race. I, I see. I know what you're saying. It's one of these situations where, as public handicappers, you kind of hold your nose and you take the short price because he's the best horse and he's likely to win. But again, you're not going to be surprised if Tacitus gets beat because that's what he's done throughout his career. I'd like to see him win. I think he's a likable horse. I think Bill Mott's found a spot for him. 4125 for Mike, 4521 for me. The grade one Jockey Club Gold Cup is your Saturday race of the day. It's the ninth at Belmont. Best of luck.